Hey, Ed, hi, how are you? I'm very good, Charles. Thank you for taking the time. Um, such, uh, such a pleasure and an interesting, um, I, I just want to pick your brain. It's, it's really how it, how it goes right now. How have you been feeling about this month? How, what is, what a whirlwind it must have been for you this month going from a show to another show back to a show and promoting it premieres. What, what is your last sort of month, month and a half been like? Uh, it's been, uh, it's, it's been, uh, very busy and it's been a time like I can't remember I've never you know I've, I've been very lucky with my time down the years but I feel that this has been a particularly um, uh, fortuitous moment I feel that you know to have the opportunity to have played these two parts in both these shows and them to be you know fairly front and center roles and to have them coming out at the same time is incredibly incredibly lucky uh, and I've enjoyed I mean, I mean it's it's always a pleasure when you get to talk about parts that you really enjoyed piecing together and that's been the case with both of these for very very different reasons they are completely different humans but I have I've relished playing them so much that actually having the opportunity to chat things through is I've I've, I've thoroughly enjoyed doing but yeah there's been there's been there's been premieres and photo shoots and all that sort of thing thrown in there as well but yeah it's been yeah it's been it's been a slightly surreal time like, I mean I've never had a moment like that in 18 years of doing this industry so yeah, I don't think. Wow. Yeah, it's been a, it's been a, it's been a strange year for a lot of people. So I don't know yeah. something about something about twenty twenty three has been really uh, uh, the things that are that are happening, the content yeah, for, coming out. Yeah, well, I guess it's, you know that we have, obviously there was a big um, sort of fallow period for many people because of mm. you know certain world events, uh, and I think that on the back of that where everyone's trying to do whatever they can to get as much work put together I, I also realize it's still a big struggle for lots of people out there who you know actors I know many who haven't had the chance to get back out there since certain things took place so uh, I feel very very lucky that I'm in the position where I have yeah two shows to talk about and because mm -hmm. of the, the nature of you that's been split up into two parts so I have the second part that comes out this week that I'm mm -hmm. you know I'm allowed to I'm allowed to have a chat about now it's great we are now allowed to talk about let's take it let's start it off with part one and how people, how, how have you felt about part one? How, pe how people are reacting to it? I've seen a lot of commentary uh, mm. about it, a lot of theories. And the first part, it's revealed at the last uh, episode of the first part of the season that you are the killer, that you're, you're, the, you're the guy that we didn't, you know, we might have suspected before and we find out that it is you. Um, how have you felt about it? How do, how do you feel about the first part of the season, the reveal, and how people have been responding to it? Uh, I mean, it's it's hard. I mean, it's hard for me to really to gauge it and to be. Uh, I don't know. I, I I I struggle. I'm very aware of the commentary because I feel that this show is has such a cult following, and in in the in the age of social media, this one in particular, it feels like it lives out on social media. It's really like the, 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 the emotion, the feeling, the, 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 the media presence, so much of it feels like it's played out in social media, much more so than other, other shows, I think, in, in rather than your conventional you know, promotion. And I feel that that's, maybe that's the demographic, I'm not sure, but it, 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 it feels visceral. The commentary feels visceral. And there's definitely split opinion. There's split opinion on the character there's or, or what that character's up to whether they like him or not i mean and that's good because at least people are talking about it <laughs> so it's better to being having being spoken about than not i'm i i'm intrigued to see how people respond after the second part is out because i think that whatever you feel about reese now it could your your emotion towards him could change for better or for worse in the aftermath of that Let's um, take it. Let's take it from there. Reese, you said a character unlike any that you've ever played before, that you feel like this is sort of a different performance than you've given. Just me, just me quoting you back to you. How do you how do you feel about that? Do you do you play him differently than you've ever played any of your other characters? Uh, I, I don't think it's necessarily a case of playing differently. Some of the process was was different. If I compare him into, even into looking at how I played uh, the, the role in Picard, definitely in order to try and understand him, to boil him down, was it was a different 
way of looking at a character because some of it had to be sort of reverse engineered I suppose I didn't have everything at my fingertips I didn't have a huge I had an element of backstory but I didn't I didn't have I didn't have access to all scripts to understand and you know those things to be thinking about for later on in the series I almost had to be so aware of what was coming up but I didn't have the information so I had to, to really try and really understand who he was as clearly and quickly as possible I, I think the reason why I felt it wasn't someone I'd I'd encountered playing before is the the sheer uh, liberation I felt from from playing him in that second half in particular. I felt that the once the shackles come off and the cat's out of the bag, it, it felt like I was I was able to to use tools and explore things within myself that I hadn't. Um, and and I feel that something that Penn and I talked about quite a lot, and and the directors throughout the series, we really and Sarah as well, we really try to explore. The, the humour in Reese, I feel that because although although the acts he is trying to carve out for, for other people and, and and what he's asking Joe to do are are, are pretty uh, uh, abominable, I feel he's doing it in a way that is, or certainly trying to do it in a way that is is, is light, and he is trying to poke and prod and, and actually jibe and and, and there, there is a there's a devil may care attitude, I suppose, to him. Like he's, you know, he, he's, there is, it's not even bravado, but I feel that uh, what I found interesting exploring with him was this, this humorous side. Yeah. Well, one thing we were, meant, we were talking about earlier is that you thought it was an interesting decision that Netflix had split it up into two halves, just about mm -hmm. a month apart. A month is a very interesting time. Did yeah. you have a different approach to the character or to the scene based on, I mean, maybe if you didn't know that was coming, did you play it differently in the first part and in the second part? Well, I, I knew what was I knew what was coming in terms of the, the overall layout of the, for the part. Um, interestingly, in terms of the two Reese's, no, because we don't see much of the real, we don't really ever see much of the real Reese. You only see, yeah. I think it's three episodes. Uh, I didn't, I didn't necessarily look at, him being different when he went before the cat was out the bag because he is still that manifestation in the in the first part mm -hmm. and it was just a case of dealing with it scene by scene and seeing because he had to develop the relationship so he has to get joe on side and, and actually you don't worry about the fact you're a, the manifestation you are just dealing with your with your acting partner your scene partner and trying to to make these these humans connect, and I think that's what what Reese was looking for was some sort of connection with Joe, and I think he felt that he there was there was kindred spirits there. So I didn't I didn't necessarily deal with that any differently. I just allowed the story to develop, I suppose, and to and to and to just keep pushing myself as 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 the scenes came along, and as and and, and of course the second part is just so bananas that um, it, I, I was again I come back to this thing. I was just allowed suddenly. I was just allowed to just explore everything like everything really I was, I was given free reign which was great as well which is always a fun thing <laughs> one thing i think is interesting i not mentioned earlier is that joe and maybe really the audience is looking for the eat the rich killer and we're introduced to all of these people these potential suspects and i think what's a really precarious balance that the show does so well is these are kind of not the greatest people mm. The mm. eat the rich killer, you know, you almost feel the sympathy of, you know, when you see them dying, you go, well, it's not much of a loss, perhaps, or, you know, that I think it plays into a lot of sort of the feelings that people have right now. There's mm. the exploring issues of, you know, the wealth inequality or of, you know, the 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 billionaires and sort of the lack of accountability and just the idea of um, culture shock, really. So I think it, it presents a really sort of interesting dichotomy on the show. Um, you talked about how you hadn't even seen the show when your British agent kind of tipped you off about it. What was your experience like of getting into it, sort of feeling the rhythm of the show? Yeah, I mean, once, obviously, once I was cast, I was, I, was, I, I, I did devour the episodes and the seasons. Uh, and there were certain things I really, really warmed to and, 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 I felt I, I actually I, my my sort of finishing point from having watched the first three seasons was I felt that this show maybe should have well, certainly the, certainly some of the protagonists had, had should uh, should have had more accolade for their work I guess what I, I actually felt um, I think I think it's it's obviously something that's captured people's minds and and hearts and imaginations because there is I, I guess we are 
we're forced to be in a situation where we are <laughs> we are empathizing with someone who who is committing some pretty heinous acts mm-hmm. against yeah i mean no, no matter who these people are in society you know we shouldn't be wishing that much <laughs> that much uh, no maybe not death them. but but no, the, the suffering or you know cutting yeah. them down to size a little bit we yeah. can say I, mean, I think that's healthy every now and then yeah that, that's healthy every now and then but i think it, it is i think that's that's great that's a great part about this show is that it's still it's keeping very current you know it's it's it is dealing with issues that we are constantly reading about in in the news in the press but it but it does it in a way that allows us this uh escape and it does it with levity almost tongue-in-cheek that's allowing us to just be part of that journey rather than worry too much about should we be should we be on board with it should we should we really be having this much empathy in terms of trying to find my way into the rhythm I think that that was always important. You have to watch what's come before because you you can't come into something that's been incredibly, you can't come into anything that's, and not have an understanding, but something that's been so revered and been so successful and not try and work out your own, how you're going to slot into that world. I think the the saving grace or the luxury I was afforded is the fact that this character feels that he's he's quite unique in the construct of of of, of how this show is set up. Mm-hmm. which which allowed me to to have, create my own rhythm and he's he's mainly dealing with with with, with joe so much of the time mm-hmm. but it's something you always talk about is how how are you gonna, how are you going to slot into that thing and it's just it's it, a lot of the time it was just dealing with with joe on the day to day and trying to or pen and and trying to work out how how i could how i could play with him how i could push him how i could put the needle into him and cause cause him as much suffering as possible i suppose mm. <laughs> yeah for sure for sure um especially with the reveal so tell me mm. about that because you talked about the free reign and that you do have so many of your scenes with pen you talked about how you bonded in real life what about on screen you know you uh the two of you the 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 the, the two of you together. Um, what what kind of uh, tactics did you use with that free reign? What were some of the sort of methods you used to explore the situation on the show? Um, I mean, I think with with Penn, Penn is a very trusting, um, a very trusting actor, and he is willing to push and to be pushed back as much as possible. Uh, there is no, you know, nothing's necessarily off the table. But I think we. I think and that's what we did. We just tried to push each other as much as possible and find, you know, we kept referencing it as being as like a the second part of being like a buddy movie. And and I feel that that allowed us to have this 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 room to play. I, th- I think in terms of in, in terms of having free reign, I a lot of it came down to letting the script do so much work as well, because the I felt that the script was so visceral and muscular. And I felt that Reese's dialogue allowed it allows almost physicality to come through into the words because they are of such a nature, and they are because of this this visceral energy that I felt the words had. I think that I was a, that that allowed so much movability. Um, also, once you have an understanding of who you're playing, I think that, and you know what what sort of baseline they're operating from, that allows you to 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 pick and choose how you're going to. To use certain tactics, and I think because of Reese's his inherent want to get Joe on side, he has to use different methods in order to charm, in order to intimidate, in order. So there's many different things you do depending on the scene with him. With as I say, charm, intimidate, befriend. Uh, you know, put an armor, try and build Joe's confidence up, then put him down again. Try and make him seem very clear. You know, be a teacher, be a be a be an ally, be a sergeant major. Like try and find as many different facets that you can to get what you want from the situation. I think that's what I was mainly looking at. One of the things I noticed is that you just look like you're having the best time on screen. I don't know if it's the outfits that inform in part or just mm. the nature, you know, and you had talked about in the past, you know, maybe you'd played some complex or out and out bad characters and you get to jump back and forth a little bit, you know, maybe shed your skin or just balance that duality. Was it the most fun just to be in that world? Yeah, I think I, I, I did. I love, I did love playing Reese, and especially in the second half because of, yeah, because of that nature to be able to, to explore everything. I mean, he was able to, like, I felt like he was able to say almost anything he wanted 
sometimes to get a reaction, sometimes to just to put it out there. I, I felt it was very important for Reese to own the space he was in at any any point. And the clothes did help. I mean, I was given the Sam Perry I've worked with before, a costume designer. Mm. She, you know, she 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 completely looked after me with some amazing looks from some wonderful like Savile Row tailors, you know, from Drake's and um, Anderson Shepherd, uh, the Cat and the Dandy being places. But also in the in the second half, we we there was a, a great decision made just to have him in this one suit, in this Paul Smith suit. And I wanted him to constantly be very upright with and together with it. And there's something about wearing clothes in, in day to day that I that make you feel a certain way. It doesn't matter what you're wearing. And, and this, but the, for me, when I put that suit on, it I generally felt it gave me an energy. It didn't matter what was going on around, what chaos and destruction was going on and around in the episodes. I just felt very uh, grounded in the suit, and I felt very able to, to bounce off from that. So I was yeah, that yeah, that is definitely something. And stepping back into to villainous human being boots shoes is something that I do relish or have really warm to uh, and it's you know I, I look for complexities in, in in any character I think we're trying to trying to understand how these people operate and why they are a certain way and yeah and I mean I've really had that in abundance so yeah I was I was having the time of my life playing it really it was it was it was a it was it was a lot of fun to play I miss and I, it's going to be very difficult trying to work out what to do next because of I've been very lucky with the with the recent roles and and that caliber of part is yeah it's going to be hard to to find something to follow on from that